Transition. Okay, we should be okay. I'll just set up my uh, YouTube here. Where's my YouTube? YouTube. Uh, okay. I'm using my iPad to preview the stream and see the chat. Top chat. Okay. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so uh, this time I want to do a really quick sketch uh, in pencil and watercolors. So um, this will be a street. Uh, based on a photo that I did recently when just I went walking uh, it's actually um, I did it actually the time I did the sketch with my um, iPad so I took a lot of photos then uh, so I just want to do a quick sketch of a Japanese street today I've been using I'll, I will be using pencils so this Tombo one and maybe Mitsubishi F and maybe Mitsubishi B. I don't know. I will. I have to see if if the HB will be too soft. Uh, I will use different ones. Hi to everyone. There are a lot of you already. So let's let's do this. I think we will go for like an hour and twenty minutes maybe, if I can fit it I'll just put a clock here so I can know the time uh, okay stop watch start okay let's do this uh, so also I would like to say a little update uh, I have been really busy with the animation but um, the last weekend I already finished all the backgrounds I had to paint and all the like bonus textures and small details and all kinds of stuff that I had to paint myself and I also finished editing all the backgrounds that um, other people did for this animation because I was not doing this by myself 
I did about 38, 40 backgrounds, I think. Uh, but there was a background studio that helped me with like six backgrounds and I had help with from um, the artist Heikara that you may, might know from Tumblr or Instagram. She is probably more popular <laughs> than me. So I was really happy that um, uh, I had such a talented artist to help me with this. Maybe I'll zoom a little. Zoom. Make it brighter. So I was really happy that I had had uh, her help, but I had to edit the things that she did. So it matches more with the overall st style of the animation. So, um, yeah, we finished, we finished doing the backgrounds and now I can uh, do some of my stuff in between uh, attending all the meetings and all the stuff that still needs to be done for the animation to be actually finished. So. Today in the afternoon I'm going for um, the recording and editing of the music and then I'm, I have one more meeting so uh, this week is still really packed with uh, meetings and stuff to stuff that has to be decided but after that uh, I will be probably uh, free for some time so I will be able to focus on my own uh, work and do more stuff for you on YouTube also so yeah I'm really looking forward to it because doing animation is really interesting but it's also really tiring so when I quit the animation studio I was really convinced that I will not do animation for some years I will be like oh I'm I will not be doing animation for years and years. I want to rest from, from all of that. But uh, I found myself doing animation about uh, half a year after I finished the animation studio. So it's not so easy to, to quit. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, do you know? Who Atelier Sento is? I know Atelier, Atelier Sento. We actually met with them. Uh, I actually met with them one time, and with Kana we met uh, them once in in Tokyo also. We are actually going to meet them um, later this year so I'm kind of excited about that. I wanted them to participate in the animation also because they are really good at painting backgrounds and um, scenes like cities and, and nature and everything but they were a little bit busy with the watercolor painted game that they are developing right now so they could not participate in this animation. Uh, if you don't know who they are, just Google them and they are uh, a pair of artists that do comics and uh, games that are that have watercolor painted backgrounds and characters and they are great. Atelier Sento is not living in Japan. They were living in Japan, but not now. Now they, they are in, in France, I think, again. Hmm. Atelier Sento. We have uh, their newest comics, the Onibi, which is really good. And it was recently released in uh, French and in, and in Japanese and I think in English recently. So um, if you want to read a really nice comic about Japan written, uh, painted in uh, watercolors, it's really nice. Hi. 
Welcome to my next live stream. <laughs> this time I want to show you a sketch that I will be doing in my sketchbook. And this is um, this is a small sketchbook that I use outside, but uh, it actually has the same paper that I usually use with my watercolors. So this is the Waterford white um, 300 grams paper. So it's really nice for watercolors. So even though this is a nice small sketchbook and it has rings on, on top, uh, it has a really good paper for watercolor painting. So I can do everything the same way as I usually do and I don't have to worry that um, this is a sketchbook and I cannot do stuff. Okay. I want to keep the background kind of loose, sir. So I'll just erase this line a little bit. Good morning! It's actually, yeah, still mo morning? Morning, yeah. It's 11.30 in, in, in Japan here. I'm going to do a collaboration with Kana. We actually have one project planned. Uh, it's the City of Wave, uh, City of Waves project. But I cannot tell you more about it now. I will tell you more about it uh, soon because uh, probably we will start working on on it in the second half of this year. So. Hi! Hi to everyone! Oh! Arigato! Thank you! Okay, so here are like trees and stuff and I want to do them mostly with watercolors so I will not put so much uh, pencil lines on the trees just a little bit so I know that shape but i don't want to um make them like this kind of pencil sketch and line style i want to do more watercolor sketch this time yeah making the anime was fun and you will be able to see it soon but i want to go to uh, finishing my own projects also and I'm really excited about doing the uh, City of Waves project with Kana also so yeah mm, no um uh, this is the question about the the books when I was doing my first like real book uh, The book was based on a project that I did uh, For myself originally on the Tokyo Storyfronts project and that project started with just me painting some uh, Japanese cute stores that I liked so the idea for the book was um, kind of ready. So uh, we didn't have any kind of editorial uh, guidance that, oh, you should do this project or you should do this project. Uh, it was kind of, we like this project a lot and we think that if you turn it into a book, it will be really nice. So that was really nice um, from this point but um, we had uh, some help from the from from the uh, editor uh, because she not only um, helped make the book look better and make the content look better and um, helped us with the uh, Japanese and English uh, mix and all kinds of things but also 
because this project included um, going to shops and just painting some shops and in some cases houses because the shop was a shop but now it's a house of just people so we had to get permissions from the owners to feature it in a book because not everyone wants their house to be featured in a book and uh, then have like tourists going to the place and making photos and uh, you know um, just doing the how do you call it in English um, going to the places that you know from anime for example or whatever so um, we had to ask for permissions from everyone uh, and the editor was really nice to um, get the permissions for from the uh, owners of the of the shops and also from the companies because some shops had logos on them uh, so we had to yeah no we, we did the scouting like by ourselves we did uh, we went with the editor to the places and did the photos but before doing the photos the editor cont contacted the uh, the shops if they are really um uh, if they are willing to to participate at all in this project so um before even me going with kana and the editor uh to the places and making photos uh, we still had to confirm that they are kind of uh, willing to participate and also like I, as i said some brands did not want their marks to be used and uh, we had to ask for permissions from some brands because um, the mark on the shop was a uh, old mark that is no longer in use so we had some problems with that also so there was a lot of stuff that uh, had to be done before um, I started to paint and there was not so much time so I was really happy that the editor helped us uh, helped me to to do the uh, like footwork in some places that was really difficult because you have shops that are really old so some um, Older people also are, are still running them. So you have shops that open like non-regular hours just when the owner feels like it. So you cannot just go there and ask for the permission. And some of them don't even answer like phones or uh, don't have fax machines or computers. So you just have to go there and uh, be lucky to meet them. <laughs> I really cannot say anything about Kobe University because I was there only for my language um, work so only only to study Japanese for like three months so I did not attend any of their uh, real cl classes uh, I know uh, I have a friend who finished mathematics in Kobe University and he was kind of okay with it so I think it's okay for foreigners if that's what you're asking for. I think the book should be uh, you'll be you you should be able to buy from South America. Uh, I know people that bought the book from really crazy places, so you should try to uh, order on some of the online shops. The book is on Amazon and on Tokyo Otaku Mode and on CD Japan and also probably on other shops that I don't know of. Okay, so there is a Tori gate here and it's kind of interesting one actually. Mm. Uh, by the way, um, this sketch that I'm doing right now uh, will be uh, uploaded later to my Patreon page in full quality. So if you are supporting me on Patreon, you will get this sketch on uh, like full three, three or 600 DPI, DPI scan so uh, you can see it in better details.
<laughs> I I did not I did not um I did not attend an art school. Uh, not in the way that you usually attend an art school because um, in Poland I was learning, um, I was studying uh, IT, so computer science. And then uh, at the university I also was studying computer science but only with a uh, computer graphics like additional classes so I did not do the um, full uh, art school thing that you would usually have so I'm mostly self-taught I, I think That's that's good. It's that that's good that you uh, try to um, remove the dust because usually it means that the stream is good quality that you can see it. <laughs> uh, for sh sharpening my pencils, I use an electric sharpener most of the times. I have it there. It's called Axis pencil sharpener, and uh, most of the animators that are in in Japan use electric sharpeners to sharpen their pencils and it's really good I recommend it I will be doing something similar to Tokyo Storyfronts uh, but not exactly Tokyo Storyfronts so yeah Okay, and there is like an electric thing here. This is really small actually, this is just like my hand, so it's kind of small. There is like a thing here. Okay, and there are more stairs like in the back and there's something there but there is also trees so I will focus on the trees with watercolors actually so I will just add the cables that are on the electric po pole and we will be able to start with watercolors I think let's see how they how they are From here to here, and there's like a thick one here, but it's like covered in the middle by the tree. So I will leave it here and just mark that it goes like here in the distance. And there's like here, and there's this one here. I really like the <laughs> electric cables that are like a web in the sky. It does not look clean or like minimalistic, but it has its own um, charm, I think. So um, in Tokyo, in some places, they already put the cables like in the ground. So they um, took the all the electric poles away and I'm kind of, I kind of miss it. There are like details here and this part here also has like a cable that goes like here. <sighs> the Poland storefronts would be awesome um, in some places. But I don't think there is like um, really um, like one city that I could just do like, I don't know, Katowice storefronts or whatever. 
maybe if I went for like retro spots or whatever, uh, I could I could get like enough to paint. But in Japan in, and especially in Tokyo, the the big thing about the shops that I did uh, in the book is that there are kind of squeezed uh, between other buildings, so they are kind of narrow. And it makes them easier to paint in a book because most of them have similar shape. Uh, some of them are also parts of like um, shopping streets, that's be uh, so that's why they have like the similar shapes. And I really like the shapes. And so that's why it's easier to fit them in like one series of illustrations. And there's also here. It's really important in painting like this cable stuff that not to do them at random, but uh, think about how how they are connected and to where. And it's not good. <laughs> okay, so that's more or less the sketch done. The sketch the lines. So I'll switch to my watercolors. I really like to try new med medium. Uh, I always try to, to find new interesting stuff. If it's not too expensive, I try to buy new things. Like, for example, the recently I bought this like new Stettler uh, watercolor pencils. I'm still to try them, but they seem really nice. And it helps kind of stay fresh. Okay, I'll move it a little bit here. And zoom out a little bit. Okay, so you can see all the thing and it's not covered by the chat. Okay, so I have my test paper here, I have my palette here, and I have my brushes. Most of them are the Raphael Soft Aqua brushes. And I have my huge, a lot of colors, watercolor palette. The Schminke one that I usually use. I have a photo reference here on my iPad. Um, maybe I can show you. This is how it looks. And this is just a photo I took on one of my uh, walks. Okay, so let's go for the watercolors. And this time I want to do really simple watercolor style uh, without too much details, which will be kind of interesting to try here. So first let's do the sky and I will try to speak the colors that I'm using uh, if you want to try it at home. We will paint some happy little, little trees. Okay, so now I'm using mountain blue. Uh, it's all schminke colors, so you can uh, see the numbers. Okay, mountain, mountain blue is a really nice color for sky because it's not like ultramarine blue and it's not like um, Prussian blue. It's kind of in the middle. So I like it because I don't have to mix a color like this. Okay, so we have to paint from, from here, but we have to be careful not to paint over the place where the trees will be. So um, let's, let's, let's see. Let's try to make some clouds also as we go. That will be kind of hard, but let's try. 
The sky is more saturated and strong on the top and goes more and more transparent uh, as we go down so I will be adding more water as I go and I will try to dilute, dilute it uh, as I as I go and let's make a cloud here and let's make another one like um, more or less here so I'll paint it only with water like this okay and now the pole is here but the sky also goes a little bit here and there are some trees but the sky is kind of you can see through the trees the sky a little bit so we have to paint a little bit here too and a little bit lower also like this and now let's connect the bottom and top parts and also add a little bit more here like that and I will add maybe not add a little bit more on the top to make it a little bit darker it's still kind of wet so I can blend it without making like hard lines the paper is not um, glued or taped down so I cannot use so much water here so this will be more this will be more like light watercolor sketching than anything else okay more or less like this okay <sighs> Kana did not study art also, she is also more or less self-taught. Um, she went to a school that was um, about web design and designing stuff like icons and stuff like that. So that's a little bit different, uh, not fine art. Okay, so let's do the sky here on the left side. There is a tree, actually two trees, so we have to think ahead a little bit so um let's see that let's say that the, the trunk is here there's some branches and some stuff here thank you Okay, and a little bit down also. This is hard. <laughs> this is hard to do with watercolors because um, you have to kind of do a color in book without having the lines. <laughs> and a little bit more water the down sky here it's visible like between some buildings and trees usually I have most of the lines uh, in pencil so I don't do this kind of uh, guesswork let's say uh, about where things are but this kind of painting kind of makes you think more and thinking is good <laughs> like it's a nice exercise for your painting brain uh, so 
What is this? Okay, so we have uh, the sky here. I will add a little bit more like this kind of, we can see the sky through the trees, uh, stuff like here and maybe here a little bit. I like this paint because it, it, it has a really nice granulating effect. You can see the texture here a little bit because it's still wet and this is a cold press paper so it does not have so much texture but even with this paper um, this paint has and gives nice granulating effect okay so more or less like this I don't think there is a, a, a method of printing the lines on the watercolor paper. You could try something like a laser printer, but because laser printers, um, uh, the way they work is they have like the drums inside. So they kind of um, get the, the paper gets kind of sucked in and then um, rolled onto uh, like drums inside of the machine so it would not be probably feasible to do it with um, watercolor paper uh, but usual uh, just inkjet printers don't um, have a waterproof ink so that would be a disaster if you tried to paint on over like uh, stuff that is printed from just usual inkjet printer it would all kind of be runny. Okay, so let's do some details here. I want to keep this simple, so I want to um, get the texture of the stone work only with probably two colors. So I will use this, which is sep uh, burnt burnt umber, burnt umber. Uh, really really um, di diluted and again i will use the mountain blue a little bit here uh, yeah i know what you mean about messing uh, up the watercolors uh, but it's I don't have a, a, a solution for this. It would be really nice to have a, a ability to copy the line, lo line work like, like you can do with Copics, Copic markers, because with Copics you can, you can draw on top of uh, laser prints, laser printer prints, because you use only like usual paper. You, you don't have to use like watercolor thick paper for Copics. So, that's why you can just print uh, the lines how many times you want and then paint over it. Okay, let's add some Naples yellow to this and paint this part here. Okay. There's like a highlight here. The shadow will be on the left side. So the right side is kind of bright colors. And I'm trying to keep the amount of colors I'm using to the uh, minimum. So I'm using the mountain blue uh, and burnt umber here for like the stones also. Yeah, you can you can use a light box to um, 
transfer the lines this is what actually what i do with most of my um bigger like work that is commissions and stuff it's um most of the time i would do a sketch digitally and do the colors digitally uh, this is one also one thing that you can do you can do the colors digitally uh, and then i send it to the publisher and when they are like okay we, we like the cover or we like the illustration do it in watercolors uh, then i do uh, i trace the lines with pencil on my watercolor paper and uh, i try to uh, make better colors with the watercolors than the ones i did with uh digital because usually with digital i just do like a sketch really rough line i really love rough colors Fish. Yeah, waterproof pens are nice. Uh, what color do I have? Okay. But with watercolors, you have to be kind of careful with pens because uh, if you overdo the lines, uh, they will end up kind of really stronger than the what than the colors themselves. So it's easy to kind of overwhelm uh, your painting with with the lines. This is one of the things I'm trying to fight right now with my own art is that the lines are kind of strong and sometimes too strong for for the overall balance. So you kind of see the lines, but the color is kind of lost in Okay, so here I'm mixing a color that I really like, uh, which is Mother Brown 670 uh, with the Mountain Blue to get a nice shadow here. It's not the usual combination I use for shadows, but it's good to vary your mixes so you don't get stuck in one like shadow mix okay so here's a shadow let's do this mix it's good to kind of um, vary your palette a little bit okay this is actually nice color i like it There is a shadow here from a bush, 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 Okay. And there is also a shadow like here beneath the thing. This thing here is, uh, from what I know, it's um, like there are wooden plaques, plates, plaques with names of people who gave uh, to the uh, shrine that is here. So. Their names are kind of displayed here. Okay, and let's make a shadow here also. I'm using the same kind of biggish brush here, not to get bogged down in details because this is already really small, so I don't want to be like over detailed here. This is why I'm kind of limiting myself by using just one bigger brush. It's it's harder and you have to have a steadier hand, but it kind of prevents you from going like crazy on details. 
I don't have so much time today to do this sketch, so I don't want to be like really over detailed. I'm going to do some digital painting. I'm um, really happy about the Procreate uh, on my iPad. I'm actually testing a Procreate beta on my iPad right now. The the new the new one with new some some new features. So um, I cannot tell you about those new features yet, but uh, I'm really happy about those new features because they are exactly what I was hoping for for my uh, like painting style and for some things that I'm used to use. So I'm really happy about um, how uh, I can paint with Procreate. And also really nice is the fact that it records all the painting process for me. Also in 4K. So th uh, this is really nice for me to uh, show you my work and how, how I paint. So I, I'm sure that I will be making more Procreate videos from now because um, I have some more free time uh, from my um, animation work. So I can again paint some random things. And also I have uh, one little nice commission for an illustration that I will be also able to show you uh, because the um, publisher who ordered the commission. I don't usually take commissions, but this publisher wanted me to do a video and show it to you how I paint this one. So um, I was really happy to work with it. I have the Autodesk sketchbook and it's probably one of the oldest app, uh, apps for painting that I tried and used. Uh, I don't know, it's just only uh, when I was using the, the Autodesk sketchbook, I didn't have the Apple Pencil because I was using it on my uh, regular old iPad. And when I got the Apple Pencil, I bought uh, Procreate and I just really liked how light and fast Procreate was. So that is one of the reasons I, I kind of st stuck with it. And also, of course, the, the, the function that allows me to record stuff and show it to you is really important for me. So I know that Adobe uh, Photoshop Sketch also has the uh, recording function lately. So um, that is really nice, especially that I like some of the brushes that I can import there from just Photoshop. And there is the Kyle's brushes collection on there you can use, which is also really useful and nice. So there are some apps that I would like to, to try for painting, but um, I don't know, Procreate is kind of, kind of does it for me. It's like nice balance of power and efficiency and um, it has a nice balance i think food series i would like to do food series especially with kana because kana likes painting food food shokudo shoku hin series I, uh, for my for, for my book, the Tokyo Storyfronts book, I painted all of my tools that I use in watercolors. So you can see that I painted some of my tools, uh, like the, my brushes and my watercolor palette and all the paints that I use and all kinds of stuff with watercolors. And that was really fun to do, actually. Um, And that was really fun to do. So if I if I could paint like some food stuffs, like in this kind of style with details, that would be really um, interesting to do too. Okay, so here's the Tory Gate. And there's like a pole here that is also concrete. So let's paint it blue-ish. I'm using here only the two colors, like. 
Mountain Blue and Mother Brown to paint this. I'm just adding more brown when I want more gray intensive color and use like only the blue one, the blue color for, for like all the highlights and And shadow, what well, uh, shadow, shadows I'm also doing with the mix of mother brown and mountain blue. The book is um is was close to being sold out. Like uh, my the publisher contacted me and he was like, "Look, we have only like 100 copies left, so the book is going to uh, for reprint." And it actually sold out in some Japanese stores that had like five, ten copies only. But um, the book actually never went to like completely sold out. There's no more copies we have to reprint because the publisher was so kind of... Uh, he, he had his hand on the pulse that um, he uh, ordered the print uh, before the book actually uh, sold out. So there was no like this kind of time lag that um, oh we have to print more which was nice only like amazon for a day or two had like sold out and the book actually is really popular on uh, on japanese amazon and i'm uh, really happy about this because uh we are like in most most of the times like first place in like art albums and first place in like Japanese cult uh, cultural asset illustrations and all kinds of weird categories like of of culture of culture alternative culture let's say category and, and stuff like that uh, the book is like holding its nice position for three weeks now so that is really um, rare for an art book and especially for an art book from someone who is new in the game because this is only my, my first book so I'm really happy and I'm really grateful because it's all your <laughs> um, pre-orders also and those of you who bought recently on Amazon who are making the book popular and, and because you are sharing the book on uh, Twitter and all kinds of social media like oh I bought the book it's really nice and I'm always really happy to to see it and I'm really happy that other people also can see it and buy it but um, probably the most um, I'm most ha mostly happy about um, the comments because there are a lot of comments that say, oh, the book is nice and it has nice watercolor illustrations. But the best part is that it makes you go out and look for nice buildings by yourself or paint with watercolors. And this is one of the uh, main goals I had with this book. Okay. And let's paint the shadow here, but here it's more bluish, so let's, let's, let's make it more bluish. It's already starting to get really hot in Japan. I don't know if the rainy season is coming or not, but it's starting to get really hot again. Okay, and let's make also the shadow that is on the street here and the shadow here is from trees so it's kind of this crazy pattern of uh, shadows and let's make it darker uh, when it comes here and let's add more of the mother brown and a little bit of water to make it kind of reddish uh, too much here on the on the border 
to the edge of the shadow. Okay. Wow, nice. <laughs> Leon Core, nice. That is really nice. あの東京店構えを、えー、と東京のガイドとして使って店,店の人とからサインをもらったっておお<笑>お店の人からいいね<笑>嬉しいねえー、The book is、uh, sold right now on Japanese Amazon and some other stores that are selling Japanese book, out, books outside of Japan like Tokyo,、uh, Tokyo Otaku Mode or CD Japan. So you should be able to order from、uh, America. I know a lot of you already did, so that should be completely possible. I think that someone says that posting it to the US costs like $9、uh, plus the, to the、uh, price of the book. So it's possible. The only thing is that you have to、uh, make an account on Amazon Japan and order it there. But the site、uh, is in English. You have to switch the languages. And、uh, if you don't know how to do it, there are some、uh, tutorials on, inter- on the internet how to do it. And just you have to like, Google for、um, how to buy books on Amazon J- Japan from US or something like that. And you will see some pages that have. Really、uh, nice tutorials how to order the book. Okay, so let's put some shadow on the Tori gate also and on the obelisk here. Obelix. Obelix. Okay, and while we have this color, I will also put some color here on the thing. Okay, and there's some like details on the On the thing here, but、uh, first shadow. Okay, so、um, this is important in watercolors. You have to keep the order of colors from light to dark. So if I did the letters here on this stone and then painted the shadow, the letters that I painted earlier would blur and will not, would not be nice. So、um, this is really important. And let's put some blue on the sign here. Okay, and there's some like buildings in the distance, so I don't want to paint them、uh, like really detailed, so I just mark that they are kind of there. So,、um, like, add a roof here, and when this roof dries, I will add some、uh, shadows, maybe one more here. Okay, so we are nearly、uh, closing to one hour, and I have to start on the trees here. So I'll just dry this up really quick. <sighs> Clean my palette a little bit. I'm, I'm leaving a little bit of the mountain blue because probably I'll use it again. And here's my paper. Let's do a no- new one. This is actually a paper I got for free because、um, the stock that they had in the art store、uh, went like dark from UV light. So they could not sell the paper anymore because it has like weird brown edges. 
uh, that's why they give it for me to me for free and I'm using it as my test paper to test colors. Ah, yondekureru. Konnichiwa. Okay, let's do some green. What e color will we use? Let's uh, let's see. ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。え、レッツユースソム。アイウィルユースソムカディミアムグリーン、which like lighter colors so it's not really saturated um but yeah let's see this is a sketch so um i'm not going to paint really small details but this is kind of pastel colors so let's try to do some nice uh green and i also use a little bit of green yellow to do the highlights so to do the most saturated green parts like kind of here okay let's go Question. Hi, Mateusz. How long does it usually take for you to complete a piece on average? Uh, oh, this is uh, difficult because um, different pieces have different um, difficulty and take different amounts of time. I mean, that's ob uh, kind of obvious. Sorry. Uh, but... Um, Usually when I paint with watercolors and it's kind of like a cover for a book or something that has more details and it's not just only a sketch. It can take me two days to complete it like with the lines. So lines and painting. But if it's just a sketch like this one, I can do a sketch like in an hour or two. Yeah, this is a nice combination of colors. I like it. I will add a little bit of sap green here to make it kind of more summer green color because this is a like summery green mm, scene. So let's try to add some. But also when I paint like digitally um, it depends. I can do a digital sketch on in Procreate on my iPad uh, for like four hours and it's finished. But I can do a digital illustration that takes me like three, four days to finish because it has a lot of like city uh, buildings and, and uh, takes a lot of time to finish because just the details are like overwhelming. <laughs> um, so there, there's a, a lot of different uh, things you can have a comic page that you can paint in you can color in like three hours and it's done and you can have a comic page that takes two days to, to do but on average i would say that um, six seven hours is a nice average for for me i think Fantasy backgrounds. No, I did not do, but that is a really interesting thing to try. I think in the future, I have a lot of things to to try. Okay. There's like a tree trunk here, so I will have to paint kind of. around it I'm sorry that I cannot answer all your questions uh, because it's just too fast for me to look at all your submissions what do you listen while you're painting um, we have a CD player here that plays CDs for us where while we um, work 
which is nice uh, because it kind of makes you more aware of what you're listening you are not just you know um choosing the last song that was on your iphone or whatever but um, you have to go to the uh, cd rack and take the cd and choose a music for today and uh, so it's nice to do it in this kind of way but i also listen to a lot of uh, audiobooks like um, neil gaiman or uh, harry potter or uh, recently i did um Harlan Ellison, the you, I have no mouth, but I have to scream, and it was terrifying. So if you want to terrify yourself while painting, just listen to to that one. It's a short story; it's like forty minutes on audiobook, and it was like terrifying. I don't remember what I was painting that time, but. Uh, I also listen to podcasts. Um, I, I I used to do a podcast of my own when I came to Japan in Polish. But yeah, I like podcasts and I listen to podcasts while I, I uh, paint. I listen to like um, recently Anthropocene Reviewed, which is an interesting one. Okay. okay, so this part is kind of darker because it's in the shadow, so I will try to keep the colors to minimum. So I will use the mother brown and mountain blue and mix it a little bit with green to make this kind of greenish blue color. And let's see how it works. I'm not really sure about this, but whatever, here it goes. Oh, it's not bad. Having a limited palette and limited limiting yourself while painting with only like few colors it really makes you work and it's nice for sketches like this. For more detailed paintings I like to have a lot of colors on my hands so I can paint faster uh, so I don't have to mix so much colors but um, when you are kind of at a loss what to do uh, it's nice to have a limited palette so you can um, limit yourself it's like with homework when just write anything about about some something about anything you're at a loss what to do but when you have a limit and you have to write like two pages about this you have you know what what to do so um, this is kind of the same way of thinking So I have these three colors and I'm thinking right now how to make a nice shadow with these three colors. Because I don't have any any other ones. Anthropocene Reviewed is made by... Uh, which one was that? Uh, Hank Green or John Green? John Green? And it's a nice kind of weird podcast. Yeah, John Green. The one that makes the books. How do you deal with art blocks? Um, this is kind of a difficult question for me because I rarely have art blocks. Uh, I'm most times I'm kind of excited about the next thing I want to do and I cannot wait to just uh, move uh, to the next thing so this is my problem that I have to deal with so I, I uh, have to be kind of patient and try to finish things uh, the way they should be finished more than fighting with an art block but um I kind of know what you mean because I get some kind, something like an art block when I pay, mm, do too much work and I'm too tired to do more. Then I, I have something that is similar to an art block. It's just, uh, I cannot just do it. It's too painful and 
kind of um, tiring just to sit in front of the computer. I just want to go somewhere or do something else. So that is something I have to fight with. But um, for me, it's like art block. Um, I can recommend do using new tools and buying new like tools. It, it, it doesn't have to be anything special or expensive. Just, you know, new pencils or watercolor pencil is like $1 or $2. And you can have a lot of fun with a new um, tool like this. So I recommend. Just go to an art store and buy new set, like really cheap set of, for example, um, printmaking or whatever. And it it kind of fuels your creativity or new marker or a new pen i always like to like um find new uh, art supplies i try to be kind of as minimalist as i can with my art setup but so i try not to buy um like 100 watercolor paints and try every one of them and then just stick with one so but I really, on the other hand, I also really like like uh, art supplies and I cannot just stop myself from buying a new color. By the way, I just buy, bought a new color of Schminke watercolors and it's called, I don't know what it's called because it doesn't have a... It's 657, like yellowish color and it looks like uh, it will stay in my palette because it looks really nice. Jesus, it's getting hot. Let's see. You must stay hydrated. Yay. We got a lot of um, samples from uh, Otsuka Seyaku who makes the calorie mate uh, because I'm doing the animation that uh, they sponsor. So we got a lot of calorie made and all kinds of stuff from them, which is nice. Okay, let's add some um, color detail here. I will use, I don't know, this color here. I don't have it listed up, so I don't know what, it's like a magenta color. Uh, okay, Flowers, <sighs> explosion. Nice. And you know, this, so it's tsutsuji. And it's, it was in full bloom like a month ago and it looked awesome. It was everywhere. I got into painting before I was fan of Miyazaki because I got into painting when I was still a kid and I uh, first saw a Ghibli movie when I was about 18, 20 years old probably. So, kind of late. <laughs> How is the camera doing? The camera has two bars still. Okay. I still have not... had not bought the, the thing that will allow uh, my camera to be connected to a power outlet so I still have the camera on battery power and it's okay when I'm just filming a new video for you but when I'm streaming like this it's kind of um, a pain a little bit but not so much okay Favorite color? Caputumortum! Caputumortum! No, I'm joking. My, my favorite color is probably not Caputumortum, but... Um, my favorite color name is Caputumortum, I would say. But uh, my favorite color... Probably Helio Turquoise, which is 475. 
in Schminke set numbering. I really like this blue color for doing all kinds of stuff and I use it all the time so um, I recommend it. I recommend but Caput Mortem is also nice. I mean, this is a nice color. Uh, if you if you ever wanted kind of red color that looks like it was made from ground up pottery and stuff, that is this color. I, I really like it and I recommend it because it's really good for mixing nice um, grays and stuff like ne neutral colors so it's really useful i actually wonder why it's not more like widely featured in standard watercolors sets because it's useful Uh, which one? Uh, Helio Turquoise is 475 and uh, Caput Mortum is four, uh, 645. They changed the name uh, of Caput Mortum to like, I think Indian Red or something like that, but it still says Caput Mortum on the, on the package. Probably they didn't want to have like death death on the package so they changed it can you do a cheap watercolor challenge mm. I don't really like to do this kind of challenges because um, I think that watercolors especially are uh, not so expensive. I mean, if you buy like Schminke Artist watercolor set, it, it is, but uh, you can buy nice, like for example, Winsor & Newton student grade watercolors for, I think like $20, maybe less. And it will last you for some time. So I don't really see the reason for this, only like limiting yourself probably. Mm. I would be ha happier to make a, a challenge that is like use only three colors or um, use like watercolor pencils or uh, use like a medium that you are not really familiar with like oil paints or whatever. So that would be interesting to do, but um, cheap challenges, I'm not really a fan, fan of them. You can do good art with like really cheap supplies. Uh, like just with few pencils, you can do really amazing stuff. Okay, uh, let's do more mother brown and mountain blue combination with some green here to make it more consistent. I will add a little bit more shadows here and let's start to paint the trunks of the trees. So like here. Okay. Do you always work with reference photos uh, or you do a draw uh, of the top of your mind? Mm. Most of the times I use photo reference because I want to be kind of realistic, uh, but it's mm, 
more a question of getting the architecture right so it does not look weird and it's hard to do i i can um paint a japanese house for example just from my mind i don't have to look at the reference but i try to choose a reference that kind of adds to my painting and it's just not the base of a painting and what i mean is that this house is interesting so i will use the reference for it in my painting but it's not like oh this photo is has a nice um, atmosphere to it so i'll just paint it so that's the the, the, the um, difference in in the ap approach i think okay let's make it more dark here i like the mix of the two the, the two colors like the mother brown and and the mountain blue but it's kind of hard to get it kind of intensive but let's try Let's add more green here. And also here. How do you pronounce your name? Uh, I'm Mateusz Urbanowicz. And I'm uh, Polish. So I'm from Poland. But uh, I'm living in Japan for like, like eight years and a half already. Okay. And also like there's a tree trunk here, but it kind of takes the light a little bit so uh, color it with like light gray first like here and then I'll put more darker color on it to leave the highlights and make it more kind of three-dimensional Hi. Yeah, I have a new profile profile picture because I don't know. I first I used the character that I had in my um, uh, called in Yokohama uh, series, so the dog, and I used him as he was. So I just I just used used him as my uh, like icon. But um, recently I I was doing the Tokyo Storyfronts book and my editor was like, oh, but you don't have glasses? Why, why your character has glasses? So I was like, okay, so I'll just make a version of him without the glasses. So I made it and he looks kind of <laughs> weird, but that's okay. So yeah, I have a new icon icon on the channel, but yeah. Good night! I it, it will still take probably uh, 20 minutes to finish this. <sighs> but uh, I will probably publish this later on my channel. And you will be able to use the same link as I posted on, on Twitter to, to access this later. Yeah, I actually have something planned for the Mushishi box. Uh, because we are now living in um, near Enoshima, which is really nice, but um, there is no train that you can just hop onto and go to places, like to sketch. So uh, actually having the, the, the Mushishi box backpack is really heavy. <laughs> And um, the only problem with it is really heavy. So I actually added some um, wheels to it to be able to just drag it along for the um, places that I can. 
and you can still use it as a backpack so that's a nice combo so i'll probably make a video about that soon so you can see the result it's already um, really warm in japan but i was really busy in the uh, because of the animation so i didn't have time to do like outside sketching so much as i would like to so i will um uh, wait for some nice weather and I will do a new video about the uh, Mushichi box Version 2.0 Okay, so I'm adding some shadow here on the trees in the back and There is a tree trunk here going like uh, here And some branches that are really hard to do with this big brush, but I'll try. And some here also. Hey! Hi everyone! I'm really happy that you can join me in this it's really hot in Japan Ugh, sketch session <laughs> and it's not hot enough to to put the uh, air conditioning on so it's kind of weird time okay Okay, so I'll add the fence here, like with the same color, and this, I don't know, weird thing here. And I, when I paint like this, I try to rotate the brush in my hand, so uh, it stays kind of flattish and sharp, so I can do more precise lines. I, I don't know how hot it is about 30 probably but I also have my lights here that are like really above my head which is getting the, 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 the temperature up a little bit also There's like a dark details here in the background. Probably parts of the shrine. And there's like a building here. And like a building here. And door. So stuff here. And. Okay, something like this. And. Let's do a little bit more shadow on the Tori gate also. Like so. Okay. And let's add more trees in the back. These ones are here like in shadow, so I'll make them darker. Okay. Kana is working on a uh, children's picture book actually and it was already announced uh, it's a book about uh, 
い言ってもいいよね。いいよ。うん。It's a book about、um, Ando Momofuku, who was the inventor of、um, the instant ramen. So, the instant like ramen soup.、Uh, and he was the founder of the Nishin company that is making the instant, most of the instant things in, in Japan right now. It's certainly the most famous ones. So, she is making a picture book about this. And she is nearly finished. So,、um, I think you'll be able to see it. And it will be actually published in English in the US. Yay! So,、um, you'll be actually the first ones that you'll be able to read it. Okay, and let's do more shadow here a little bit.、Um, three. だから、like this. だから、like this. I have some videos about how to paint with watercolors on my gum road. They are not expensive, like one dollar each, I think. So,、um, there are four of them, so you can、uh, just buy the ones that you are kind of interested in. Uh, and I'll be making more. I want to do、uh, about 10 of them, but I was really busy, so probably now、uh, I'll be able to finish the series. Yes, we are husband and wife! Yay! I usually use a lot of brushes for,、uh, for one painting. I use like thin and thick brushes. I have、uh, from this series, I have like three more that are of various sizes. So I usually use more、uh, brush kinds. Okay, the camera is one on one bar.、Uh, so usually, it, 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 when I want to be more detailed, I use more sizes. So it's more. Uh, easier for me to do all kinds of details and、uh, go into small places. But here it's just like I want to do a kind of a sketch, so I don't want to overdo it. That's why I'm kind of limiting myself with a、um, palette that is more consistent. I, have, I only use like six, seven colors here and only two or three main colors. Like the mountain blue and mother brown for most of the blue brown things. So, this is also a little bit of an experiment. But I'm kind of really frustrated right now because I want to use a smaller brush <laughs> for the branches.、Ah, smaller brush! <laughs> Kana chan, gambarette. Thank you very much. Okay, this is starting to be a little bit three dimensional. There's like a branch here and there, a little bit of shadow here. And I want to do this part here a little bit darker, so it's kind of more three dimensional, also. Because the light comes from here, 
so this part should be darker and actually is on the on the reference photo that I have not so much but I want to over um, amplify it a little bit so uh, it's more interesting okay and this part here needs to be darker also the only uh, advice I, I can actually give is to observe and paint so uh, observe not only like nature and real real places and photos and but also how other people painted and um, develop your style by this I'm talking a little bit uh, about this in my video about the books and inspiration that I have on my YouTube account but I didn't do anything more than this <laughs> to develop my style and so I think that practice also is really important but I don't have any like magic solutions for 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 pain for painting uh, I have my own methods that I kind of developed over time but it not necessarily is for everyone so this is also one thing okay and so i'll just add more branches and that will be kind of mostly finished probably with this brush it's really pain let's like use a smaller one i'll cheat a little bit and use a little bit smaller one yeah Please don't tell anyone that I used a smaller brush. It's always like this. I'm like, oh, I will not so do so much details on this. This is only a sketch, and I'm like, mm, details. and this white part here should be actually kind of bluish I forgot to to do it I should have done it when it was still kind of not in the shadow so um, I'll try to add it now but let's see how it goes okay and there's the thing on the Tori gate which I will use my new color which is 657 by Schminke I don't remember the name it it's something golden I think and there's like this part here okay which is a nice color I'm using a photo reference yes 
and let's do some details on the buildings like in the back this should be in shadow like let's just paint it really roughly this time let's use some blue on this ah, too much this like a window the entrance again I'm using only like uh, the mother brown and uh, mountain blue so this okay okay so this is nearly done i will add some lines on top of this probably later but i'm my camera is getting man it's still okay i'm getting close to the time that i have to go out for the next animation meeting today we are doing the sound mixing and editing for the animation nice uh, way to make uh, pictures colors harmonize is to use less colors just to try to to use a palette that is limited like five six colors maybe less even with watercolors you can probably go with four that is a nice um, way to get your mixing skills better okay But um, you can also see other people's works and try to apply the same palette that they used for your painting. Like um, you see a painting that is co completely something different. Like, uh, I don't know, a painting of a car and you want to paint something different completely. But you can use a palette that something someone used on your painting even if, though it's uh, of a completely different subject. So if you see a palette that works with nice shadows and nice highlights and it's kind of similar to what you would like to achieve in your painting it's you can just take the color palette from uh, from that painting and try to apply it to your work which is also helps you to learn about what color combinations and what shadow like highlight combination work which one works is a uh, real um, nice knowledge to, to have. I already have um, some color combinations that I know that if I use them I cannot go wrong with watercolors also and with digital also. Uh, that's why sometimes I um, kind of get stuck and I want to try some new things like here I'm using a color combination that I don't usually use at all and it's proving to be kind of interesting and nice so that's a nice um thing to add to my own kind of library of of color combinations that i can use later but then again this picture looks completely different than the thing that i set uh, set out to to paint okay so I'm adding 
some like um more hard shadows here and there to make things more kind of stand out but this picture is nearly done if i start to add more details here that it will probably go over and start to be cluttered and not really sketch like anymore not that it is a lot but Okay, so there are some shadows here from the power lines that are above. So let's add them first, like this. Oh, you cannot see it, okay. Okay. And now the last thing is to add the power lines here. So I'll just have to uh, again ch cheat a little bit probably and make a use a color that will make more kind of impression here on the painting because the mix here will be too weak. So I I will use a little bit of neutral tint. Let's zoom out a little. So I will use a little bit of neutral tint to add uh, the power lines. What? What are you going to eat for dinner? I don't know yet. <laughs> uh, I would like to eat something. You have you have no kana? Mm. Kana, Kana likes tomatoes lately and she does a lot of tomato recipes and she had a lot of tomato soup and tomato everything so yeah I have like a lot of um, calorie mates but I try not to eat them too much because um, I'm not I'm not exactly exercising, so I cannot burn them fast enough. Yeah, we want to ask you what, what you have for, for lunch. Chicken for lunch. University style rice. <laughs> University style rice. <laughs> when University. Daigaku style rice. Chahan kana? Ah, the music is uh, by uh, a person that's called Scott Buckley and he makes free music for uh, videos that you can download from his website and this is Creative Commons music so you can use it in all kinds of projects also commercial but he also has a nice Patreon page so you can support him and I'm actually supporting, supporting him so uh, if you support him there you can get some of his songs earlier and use them and he makes all kinds of songs like not only like the ones I'm using in my videos but but also more like cinematic style stuff so if you are making a big epic video game or vi epic video like Lord of the Rings thing you can also use his music
Okay, so that's nearly it, I think. I'll add some leaves here. So we can see that this is actually a, like a, how do you call it, brush, ba bush, <laughs> I always don't know. Because, oh yeah, and I, I forgot this part here. Okay, so let's use some white. I have a new toy in my um, artist equipment and it's a new thing that is made... Who makes it? Kuretake, I think. It's a, like a white uh, brush pen with uh, white ink. This is actually a little bit uh, waterproof when dry, which is nice. And uh, you can use it in all kinds of ways. So. This is a nice tool uh, for like manga and adding white details. So let's try to use it. This is actually the first time I'm using this in like watercolor painting. So let's try to use it to add some white details. VFR this is nice. I, I used some of their like sketchbooks and like paper and it's actually kind of cheap so it has a guy good price quality value but I don't use it so much uh, recently. I don't want to overdo it. The flow on this pen is really uncon uncontrollable. All my everything was white. Maybe it's because it's new and I squeezed it too much probably, but it's kind of hard to control. It's the first brush pen I have that actually has a bowl inside, so when you shake it, it goes gata gata. Okay. Do more sen o tsukeru chotto. Okay. So, I think I'll finish it at this point. I'll probably edit it a little bit in 
Photoshop and maybe I'll add a little bit of line here, but I'm kind of out of time. So for now, this is it. And I'm really happy that you could join me while I was painting this. I will probably put this video later on my YouTube so you can review it if you want to. Uh, you will be able to use the same link as I posted on Twitter to, to access it. Um, so yeah, for now, thank you for joining me. I will see you in the, my next videos that I will be making soon, I promise. And I always feel free, as always, feel free to comment, share and subscribe to my channel. And you can also support me on Patreon. So as always, really pleasure to meet you. And I'm really happy that you joined to uh, this stream. Bye.